Looks like it's in progress. Good evening and welcome to the virtual public scoping meeting for the Norfolk Harbor and Channels Navigation Improvements Anchorage F Limited Reevaluation Report or Anchorage F LRR for short. My name is Michelle Hamer and I am Chief of the Planning and Policy Branch at the Norfolk District. We also have team members joining us uh, this evening and they will be available uh, for questions. Uh, I guess if we could have our team um, put their names uh, in the chat uh, and their role on the feasibility study, that would be super helpful to share with uh, the public. Um, before we jump into the presentation, I would like to introduce one team member. Uh, his name is Mr. Victor Roberts, and he is the project manager for the feasibility study. Victor, would you like to provide some opening comments? Good afternoon. Welcome to the Norfolk Harbor and Channels Navigation Improvements Anchorage F uh, virtual public meeting. My name is Victor Roberts, the overall Norfolk Harbor 55 foot deepening project manager. Ultimately, an anchorage is similar to a parking parking spot or a highway or a highway shoulder lane for large maritime vessels. With ever changing weather patterns, growing containers commodities and ship repair traffic, and the home of the largest naval base in the world, the Norfolk Harbor is a challenging port to sail. The harbor's, harbor users utilize a tremendous amount of communication, coordination, and collaboration. I'm sorry, communication, coordination, and cooperation to serve the needs of the nation. And this is why it is essential that Anchorage F is commercial Anchorage is designed, constructed, and maintained to optimally meet the needs of its end users. The Norfolk District and Channel stakeholders truly appreciate your time and participation in this meeting. And we look forward to progressing this limited reevaluation report study. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. So our presentation will cover a project overview, a project status, and a schedule. We'll provide opportunities and email for you to provide comments about the feasibility study. Uh, this is very early in the feasibility study process, so the the presentation will be very will be an overview presentation. But as we move forward in the study and as we work towards a draft report, we will provide additional information on the website. The project authority for the Norfolk Harbor and Channels Deepening uh, initially author was initially authorized by Congress in Section 201 of the Water Resources Development Act, or WERDA, of 1986. And uh, improvements to the Norfolk Harbor Channels were authorized in WERDA 2018 following a general reevaluation report. In WERDA uh, in 2022, with the WERDA of 2022, Section 8223 uh, directed the Corps of Engineers to conduct a study to um, evaluate modifications to Anchor Jeff, uh, focusing on current and future forecasted vessel fleet. In WERDA of uh, 1986, originally the anchorage had an authorized depth of 55 feet and a diameter of 3,000 feet, uh, but as of WERDA 2018, that uh, dimension was modified to 51 feet, uh, mean low or low water, and then 3620 for a diameter. Our current maintained dimension is uh, negative 50 feet and 3,000 feet. Uh, we again, we are authorized for negative 51 feet and uh, a 3620 as a diameter for the anchorage. Uh, the anchorage is currently, again, it's designed at 33,000 feet diameter for a free swinging bow anchoring. Uh, it also lies within the designated uh, Anchorage F area, uh, and it's due west of Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel and northwest of the Norfolk Harbor Entrance Channel. The anchorage approaches uh, run from the federal channel to the tangent of the 3,000 foot circle. 
and the designated Anchorage F area is adjacent north and east of the, to the uh, U.S. Navy uh, Anchorage G area. This is our current feasibility study timeline. Uh, we signed the feasibility cost share agreement in September of last year, and we are working towards an alternatives milestone meeting in March of this year. After that, we will select a uh, tentative, uh, tentatively selected plan. That will be the plan that we recommend after additional um, optimization uh, further. But before that, we will look at the public release of a draft report. So that will be publicly available for um, review and comment. And then after we receive those comments, we will incorporate them into our final report. And that will um, culminate to a recommended plan that we will identify at an agency decision milestone, and then we will uh, complete a signed director's report. This is the feasibility study timeline. Again, beginning with the uh, feasibility cost share agreement, we are here now within the scoping phase. And then we are working again towards the alternatives milestone. And certainly uh, just a, some background information as you are in scoping, the information is very high level. And then as we work towards a recommended plan, we'll continue to optimize and uh, provide detailed assessment of the uh, plans that we, uh, the plan that we recommend and certainly the alternatives. January 31st, we conducted a planning charrette with stakeholders. The participants include the Norfolk District, Virginia Port Authority, U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Navy, Virginia Department of Transportation, and the Virginia Pilots Association. All of these great stakeholders have experience of navigating the network that currently exists and certainly can provide their concerns and background information of uh, considerations that we'll consider in the feasibility study. Topics of discussions, of course, we identified the problem. Why are we studying this in a feasibility study? Uh, what are the opportunities that we can realize as we um, identify a plan and recommend it? What are our objectives? What do we hope to accomplish by this feasibility study? What are some constraints to consider? And we'll go through this in this uh, presentation that might impact the uh, plan that we uh, recommend. And then what are some of the key uncertainties? What are those things that we don't currently know right now? Or maybe we don't have a high level um, understanding. So we certainly walked through a mapping exercise. We broke up into tables and had a mapping exercise to determine potential locations for Anchor Jeff uh, based on the expertise of the participants. Um, and again, those constraints within the area. So the problems that we identified is the probably the number one problem is that the is existing anchorages are insufficient to fully accommodate the existing fleet and certainly a future forecast fleet uh, within the area. And that includes the depth of the anchorage, which right now again is authorized at 51 feet. Um, and the dimensions of the circum or sorry, the diameter of the anchorage is insufficient to um, support the entire fleet. So lack of deep anchorage exists within the harbor and that can cause um, transit delays as you're trying to navigate the harbor and move ships around. Um, anchorage Alpha is the only location where ships with larger drafts can anchor and it's located within uh, DOD training and exercise area um, and is only makes access only available when DOD is not using it. And when they provided permission to use it, an anchorage depth, I'm sorry, the authorized depth of anchor depth is less than the adjacent channel. So the adjacent channel is authorized at 55 feet. Uh, again, the anchor depth is only at 51 feet. So again, that can um, impact uh, what vessels can use the anchorage. So what are the opportunities we hope to realize by this um, plan? And certainly as we evaluate the feasibility study. So we hope to increase the efficient um, vessel throughput through uh, the harbor and channels, um, reducing vessel wait times as they're navigating the channel system. Uh, we want to increase accessibility to the inner harbor, and inner harbor in the event of an emergency, and that can be a vessel emergency or that could be uh, 
a, a storm event within the area. And then again, overall operational flexibility for larger vessels within the harbor. Uh, the ability to optimize anchor Jeff siding uh, between encroachments. So we talked about um, HRBT. So we're evaluating the expansion of HRBT. And then to the Southwest, uh, also Anchorage G with, uh, for the Navy. So want to, and then certainly again, the navigation, federal navigation channel. So want to optimize the location uh, with all of those considerations. There is a potential to use the dredge material for beneficial use, and we want to evaluate that through this study. Um, and we want to uh, deconflict the use of the military range with commercial vessel traffic, again, by providing more opportunities to navigate within the harbor, then hopefully we can deconflict the use and then also um, reduce the delays and increase the efficiency. Also, um, the potential for siting anchor Jeff to manage shoaling. We want to look at reducing the amount of shoaling that would uh, occur within Anchorage F, and then also that reduces costs and maximizes o and benefits. So what are our objectives of the study? Um, number one, we want to reduce transportation costs. That increases efficiencies and uh, supports navigation within the harbor. Um, we want to increase safety of all vessels uh, for the entire fleet utilizing the anchorage and then minimize impact to port operations in the event of a vessel emergency if they're um, not able to uh, navigate um, under normal power. And then the constraints, certainly, as we mentioned before, the encroachments, uh, Navy, the G anchorages, which are uh, adjacent, the de Gaussing range, uh, U.S. Navy Chambers Field Airspace, and the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel Expansion. Uh, one of the thoughts is, you know, as we evaluate the potential for using uh, the dredged material for beneficial use, we'll have to look into what uh, is, that, is the makeup of that dredged material and can it be used for beneficial use. Also want to consider, are there utilities in the area that might have to be relocated? And are there any cultural and environmental resources that may be impacted um, and that can influence or certainly uh, inform uh, the anchorage and the impacts that it may cause and we would need to mitigate. So for the feasibility study, we are conducting an, uh, the National Environmental Policy Act. We will be conducting um, an evaluation and <clears throat> we are our position or Proposal is to prepare a supplemental environmental assessment as a as the Norfolk Harbor channels have been evaluated and been in place for a number of years. There's existing information that um, suggests that the additional evaluation may not be a significant impact, which is why we are suggesting a supplemental environmental assessment. Um, again, the environmental impacts were analyzed. Uh, in the general reevaluation report in 2018. And so this analysis would really be focused on the difference between what was evaluated in 2018 and what we're evaluating in this study. We will coordinate with Fish and Wildlife, uh, and look at the End also Endangered Species Act with uh, National Marine Fisheries, uh, Magnuson Stevens Fishery Conservation and Management Act, uh, the Essential Fish Habitat Assessment. Section 106, uh, National Historic Preservation Act, Coastal Zone Management Act, and Section 401, 404, Clean Water Act. Some of the topics that we'll cover certainly are air quality and greenhouse gas emissions, climate change, cultural and historic resources, uh, economics and environmental justice, fish and wildlife resources, hazardous, toxic, and radioactive materials, special status species, noise and vibration, geology, hydrology, navigation and recreation and traffic and water quality. We have opportunity for public comment. We have a website that's been um, established and we'll have a regular update.
Good afternoon. Can anyone hear me? I believe we've lost the audio. Yeah, now. Okay. Yeah, we lost it for about uh, three or four minutes at the end. That was fortunate. The last slide. 